Hello everyone, Rachel Baird, Realtor with Bridgewell Real Estate Group here in Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada. And I did want to give you guys another COVID-19 and real estate update. So today I'm going to be talking about super important things that you should consider if you are going to be buying a property right now amidst all of this craziness. Um, if you haven't seen it already, I did do a video on real estate prices and COVID-19 just a couple days ago. Uh, thanks so much for watching everyone. I know we have over um, 300 views already and it's only been a couple days and that's just organically from YouTube. I haven't even had the chance to share it online anywhere else yet just because I've been so busy with some subject removals and um, we had a bunch of completions and possessions this week. Uh, so I've been pretty swamped, but uh, definitely take a look at that if you haven't seen it already uh, because we got some interesting comments and um, I talk a little bit more about the tightening supply, uh, lack of availability to show it is obviously affecting inventory and then just that uh, demand is still pretty stable and uh, prices for the most part are also remaining stable as of right now, but we'll see if that maybe changes in the next three to four uh, weeks once a lot of the people that uh, had already sold that really really needed to buy um, maybe start to find homes and uh, the demand possibly does go down so we'll see what happens and I will definitely keep you updated uh, but talking today about important things to consider when you are um, buying right now amidst COVID-19 um, and really what I wanted to highlight for you guys is just um, adding an extra long subject removal adding a subject to getting legal advice amidst COVID-19 um, finding out if your bank's policy um, or if your bank has a policy with regards to temporary layoffs right now um, and then also just making sure that you are super aware of what type of occupancy uh, you are purchasing right now, specifically if it's tenanted property, and then also like who you're buying it from. Is it a foreign seller? Because I've seen some deals blow up with regards to that. Um, so breaking each of those down, um, adding an extra long subject removal, keep in mind banks are absolutely swamped right now. So if you have a subject to financing um, and you are going to need a mortgage on this property to purchase it, that you should be at least putting seven days. And I know that a lot of mortgage brokers are asking for up to 10 business days. Um, so seven to 10 business days, you know, there are a lot more complex files going on right now. Um, underwriters are understaffed, banks are understaffed, so things just aren't moving as fast as they usually do. Uh, so if you are going to be writing an offer on something, obviously just keep in mind that uh, things are going to be taking a little bit longer. Um, also adding in that extra subject with regards to getting legal advice on COVID-19. There are a lot more risks that come into play with purchasing a property amidst COVID-19. And although lawyers don't typically get involved until closer to the completion date, um, at this point in time, a lot of brokerages and realtors are recommending that you do add in that subject just to make sure that you're aware of the risks because there definitely are some. Um, there's, you know, deals that have gone sideways because of people losing their jobs. And so you just want to make sure that, you know, if you do hand in that deposit and you lose your job, for example, that you're aware of what the risks are, um, with regards to losing your deposit potentially, um, completions, there, there's a lot of things to consider. So make sure you're getting legal advice and you know exactly what you're getting into. Uh, the other thing with regards to that actually is that I was talking to a TD broker just recently and he was saying that TD has implemented a policy where if you are temporarily laid off from your job, say you um, remove subjects on a property and you hand in the deposit and during the time between once you've handed in that deposit and the completion day, you have uh, been issued a temporary layoff. So TD has said that they will still take that temporary layoff um, and they'll even take it during the subject removal period and they don't even need a notice on when the layoff is um, going to be lifted. They just need to know that it's temporary, get that notice from your employer and they will still work with uh, your income as if everything was normal and you were working full time. Um, and they'll just take your notice of assessments for the last two years as they usually do. Um, so that's something that, you know, that broker said that that's what TD is doing and he can only speak for TD, but he did tell me that, uh, he knows that a lot of the big banks are doing that. So just make sure that you are checking with your mortgage broker as well, what the risks are and asking them if they do have any policies with regards to temporary layoffs or if you do, um, lose your job entirely. So definitely something to think about. 
Um, the other thing is, are you buying a tenanted property? Keep in mind that there is a restriction on eviction or evicting, sorry, evictions right now. Um, and so that's definitely something to be, you know, considering. Uh, obviously, a vacant property or an owner-occupied property is going to be ideal. But as of March 30th and anything after March 30th, you can't uh, issue a mutual agreement to end tenancy. You can't do your two months uh, serving notice for vacant property anymore. That tenant cannot be evicted. And even if you do end up getting a mutual agreement to end tenancy, if the tenant changes their mind, then... Um, you know, that's their right and it's just too bad you can't evict uh, tenants right now. So obviously that's going to hurt a lot of sellers that are landlords that have tenanted properties because they're very, very, very difficult to sell at this point in time. Um, but as a buyer, make sure that you're keeping in mind that you are always checking the occupancy of the property, whether or not it's owner occupied, whether or not it's vacant whether or not it's tenanted. Um, and if you are going to be purchasing a tenanted property, just be aware of the risks and definitely be aware that you can evict um, as of March 30th. And also um, what I should say with that is that if you had served a notice to end tenancy prior to March 30th, uh, the tenant still does need to leave. That's not going to be applicable to somebody that had been issued notice before March 30th. So that's uh, good news for those people. But obviously, if you're purchasing after March 30th, then it is going to apply to you. Um, the other thing is, you know, who is the person that you are buying? from, uh, who's the seller, what do they need to buy. Um, my managing broker was just telling me about a situation where a foreign seller, um, who obviously wasn't a resident here, couldn't make it back from uh, the country because international travel was restricted and they weren't able to sign pen to paper. Um, even though land title office did just uh, issue a notice today saying that they were going to allow um, remote witnessing of affidavits to help with uh, land title completions in the event of quarantine or issues like those um, sellers that are non-residents and can't make it here. Uh, that is a new thing and you still just want to be aware of you know where that home seller is and any risks associated with the type of citizenship they have um, or what is going to happen in the event that somebody gets quarantined. So that's another thing that you might wanna be asking your lawyer during that subject to legal advice during the subject removal period. And just make sure that you are paying extra attention to everything, have all your T's crossed, all your I's dotted, um, talking to your realtor, talking to your mortgage broker, talking to a lawyer, um, making sure you're aware of the risks and just get all your ducks in a line, guys. So again, you want to make sure you have an extra long subject removal, add a subject to legal advice, uh, find out if your bank has a policy with regards to temporary layoffs or job loss and if they'll still look at your income or if losing your deposit is a risk that you should be aware of. Um, and are you buying a tenanted property and are you buying from um, a foreign seller or just who is your seller in general? So those are my tips for you right now. Um, I am going to be talking to a lawyer via Zoom meeting tomorrow um, and I will be taking notes and try and get you guys uh, some more updates on COVID-19 and real estate. And then as I said, I'm going to be tracking prices over the next four weeks or so. We're going to have another office meeting. So I'll be able to get uh, another consensus from myself and uh, my team and then also everybody else in my office that attends the Zoom meeting just to give you another update on prices just like I did uh, a couple days ago. And again, stay tuned for more videos, stay safe. And obviously, uh, real estate is still essential and I understand that. But, you know, most of all, just consider uh, whether or not you honestly really do need to buy right now or if it would just be safer to maybe hold off on buying for a little bit amidst everything uh, that's going on right now. So just answer that question honestly before you get into buying and make sure that if you do deem that it's absolutely necessary for you to buy something right now and that you do have a real essential need that you are making sure that you're protected and of course uh, if you guys have any questions always feel free to reach out to me. Mariko Berg, Realtor with Bridgeville Real Estate Group and I hope you guys have a great day.